proceeds from the Great Wisconsin Quilt Show support PBS Wisconsin programming. Your financial gift helps make this event possible. Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Great Wisconsin Quilt Show. My name is Rhonda Pierce, and I represent Smet's Home Sewing Machine Needles. What's my mission here today? My mission is to elevate your respect for the hardest working two inch piece of steel in your sewing machine, the Smets needle. I'm hoping to remove any mystery you might have about the needle and elevate your confidence in your needle selection. So let's go ahead and get started. I've got some slides here today too. And with me, I always travel with the Smet Super Demo Needle. This is 17 inches tall and anatomically correct. <laughs> And I always like to start with the parts of the needle because I believe when you're aware of the parts of the needle and their function, it helps you make an informed decision as to what needle type and size to use. So let's start with the parts of the needle. All right, so at the very top of your needle, you have a beveled edge. This is referred to as the butt of the needle. And you might think, Yes, yeah, so what? A beveled edge, what does that mean to me? Stop and think about it. When you go to insert a new needle in your machine, you don't have a lot of wiggle room. So the top of the needle is beveled for easier insertion into your machine. Our home sewing machines require a flat shank needle. A flat shank needle, again, for perfect positioning into your needle holder. We have a little transitional area referred to as the shoulder of the needle. And I hope that you've noticed that your Smets needles have either one or two bands of color. And we'll talk about those color bands shortly. We have the length of the needle, which is referred to as the blade of the needle. And Smets being a German company, they actually measure this area here of the needle to come up with the sizes that we're familiar with. So they'll measure this area here of the blade. They'll get a measurement like 0 0.70, 0 0.80, etc. They'll take that measurement times 100 to come up with the sizes that we're familiar with. Sizes 70, 80, 90, etc. So now it's easier to remember that a size 90 needle is larger than a size 70 needle. So I hope I've solved one of the little mysteries that you have about your needle. On the front of your blade, you have the groove. And on your little two inch piece of steel, you can actually see and feel the groove. But what's the function of the groove? The groove is going to cradle your thread so it moves evenly and smoothly down the length of the needle to the eye. When you're sewing, your thread should not be flip-flopping back and forth. Again, it should move evenly and smoothly down the length of the needle to the eye. We have the point and the tip, and these change according to different needle types. And on the back side of the needle, how many of you have noticed this little indentation? This is referred to as the scarf of the needle. And the scarf has a very important function. When your needle passes through your fabric and your throat plate, the bobbin hook has to come up and catch that top thread in order to create the stitch. So the bobbin hook needs passing room in order to create the stitch. And this little scarf will change in depth, length, and width according to the different um, needle types. So those are your basic parts to the needle, except I haven't talked about what I consider to be one of the most important features to your needle, and that's the eye. Your everyday needle, the universal needle, the eye is 40% the width of the blade. But look at the next needle, the embroidery needle, and you can see that the eye is wider. And when you look at the eye of the top stitch in the metallic, you can see that the eye is elongated. So when you're sewing, what does a larger eye mean to you? A larger eye means there's less stress on your thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle. So if you have problems with threads that are breaking or shredding, what are you gonna do? Yeah, 
you need to change your needle. You need to change a needle. And you may need to move up a needle size or change to a different uh, needle type. So your eye is crucial to your sewing. Next, let's talk about the Smets color chart. I want to make sure you um, understand how to read the chart. So on this chart here, on the left-hand side, the column is labeled needle type. So we have all the different needle types that are available for our home sewing machines. And many are assigned a color. On the right-hand side of the chart, we have a listing of all the different needle sizes, again, for our home sewing machines. Now look at the needle between the two columns. The top color band identifies your needle type. And the lower color band identifies your needle size. So in this sample here, the top color band is yellow. Yellow for stretch. And the lower color band is rose. Rose for size 7511. But let me walk you through a couple other examples. My favorite go-to needle for all kinds of sewing, piecing, quilting, etc., is a Microtech size 8012. Microtech. So what would the top color band be? Well, we look at the chart under needle type and we find Microtech is purple. And for size 8012, we find orange. So Microtech 8012 will have a top color band of purple and a lower color band of orange. One more example would be, what if my needle has two bands of orange? What needle type and size would that be? Well, we look off to the left under needle type and we find orange is a jersey needle. And again, we look off to the right and orange is still size 8012. So I hope this helps you identify your needles, especially after you've taken them out of your needle package. But you know what, there's one more thing I want to mention about um, the chart, and that has to do with the universal needle. So there's no color. In fact, the box is actually X'd out. So what does that mean? Universal needles will have only one band of color, and that's to identify your needle size. So if you have a universal size 8012 needle, you have just a single band of orange. If it's a universal size 9014, you just have a single band of blue. So again, I hope this helps you identify your needles, especially after you've taken them out of the needle package. Now let's move on and talk about the actual package of needles. Lots of numbers on this little pack, right? What do they all mean? Well, I think most everyone recognizes needle size or sizes. So currently, the needle size is at the bottom of your little um, plastic chip. So on this sample here, we have assorted sizes. Sizes 7010, 8012, and 9014. But how many of you have looked at that number above the size and wondered, what the heck does 13705H mean? <laughs> well, let me answer that for you. That is referred to as your needle system. Think of it as a model number. 130-705 means that the needle has a flat shank. A flat shank, again, for perfect positioning in 99% of all of our home sewing machines. The H translates from a German word that means scarf, this little indentation. So 130-705 is the needle system. Think of it as a model number. 99% of all of our home sewing machines require a flat shank needle with a scarf. So don't let that number intimidate you. Above that, you've got the needle type spelled out. So these are universal needles. Above that, you've got the Smets name, and because of the clear packaging, you can see the color bands on the needle. So we already learned that universal needles will have only one band of color to identify the needle size. So on this sample here, the two needles off to the left have um, the single bands of green. Green for size 7010. The next two needles have the orange bands for size 8012, and the needle to the far right has that single band of blue for size 9014. So lots of information on your needle pack. But let's look at one other pack of needles. 
So again, at the bottom of your needle pack currently is the needle size. So this is size 9014. Above that is your needle system 130 705H. So we know this is a flat shank needle with a scarf that you can use in your home sewing machine. But look at that line a little bit closer because there's an additional letter. On this sample here, it's a dash E, E for embroidery. On some of your other samples, you might find a dash Q for quilting or M for microtex or J for jeans, et cetera. So lots of information on your needle system line. Above that is the needle type spelled out. So these are embroidery needles. Above that, we have the, on some of our package, we'll still see the German word for needle. We've got the Smets name above that. And again, above that, through the clear packaging, you can see the color bands. So from our color chart, we learned that red is for embroidery. That top color band is red for embroidery. And the lower color band is blue, blue for size 9014. So I hope I just removed some mystery <laughs> about all those numbers and letters on your Smets needle pack. <laughs> okay, well, let's move on to um, actual needles. What do you think the most popular needle type is? And I bet most of you would guess that the universal needle is the most popular needle type. Universal is the workhorse of all needle types. The universal needle has a slightly rounded point. So it works well with both your woven fabrics and with your knit fabrics. The universal needle is also available in the widest range of sizes, from the smallest size 60 all the way up to a size 125. Plus, universal needles are available in twin and triple needles, too. So lots of um, variants or options for your universal needles. And universal size 8012 is the most popular needle type and size, followed by universal size 9014. So no matter what kind of sewing, quilting, crafting you do, I always suggest you have universal 8012 and 9014 in your stash. Now, I know here today we've got a lot of people that like to um, piece and quilt. So let's talk about five popular needle types for piecing and for quilting. And guess what? The universal needle is definitely one of the top five needles. Lots of famous quilters like to use the universal needle for both piecing and for um, quilting. But I always like to say, with Smets, you have options. So let's look at a couple other options. We've got the jeans needle, also known as a denim needle. Does that surprise you for piecing and quilting? Well, how many of you like to make jeans quilts or denim quilts? How many of you like to make flannel quilts? How many of you like to make those heavy-duty, raggy quilts? Well, when you're making those, oftentimes you need a hardy needle. So what's so special about the jeans needle? The jeans needle has a reinforced blade. A reinforced blade so that when your needle passes through your denser fabric, there's less needle deflection, less movement of the needle. So you get a cleaner stitch with the jeans needle. So again, use the jeans or denim needle when you're um, making a denim quilt, a flannel quilt, or one of those heavy-duty raggy quilts. Another option for piecing and quilting is the top stitch needle. What's so special about the top stitch? Well, when we looked at that diagram about the eyes of the needle, we saw that the top stitch needle has that elongated eye. So there's less stress on your thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle, the top stitch needle. Another needle, just as the name suggests, is the quilting needle. This needle was specifically engineered for piecing and for quilting. It has a special tapered point for piecing and for quilting. You'd probably use the size 7511 for the piecing of your project and the larger size 9014 for the quilting of your project. 
And that leaves one other needle type popular for piecing and for quilting. And maybe this is your favorite. It's my favorite. This is the Microtex needle. The generic name for a Microtex needle is a sharp needle. So when your books and patterns say use a sharp needle, well, they're not suggesting getting an emery out and trying to uh, sharpen your needle. They're referring to a Smets Microtex needle. The Microtex needle has a very slim acute point. Very slim acute point. So with the Microtex needle, you're going to get the most precise stitches. And because the Microtex needle has this very slim acute point, guess what? It's going to dull quicker than any of your other needle types. So you will need to replace your Microtex more frequently than any other needle type. Now, if you like to sew with batiks, sew piece quilt with batiks, the Microtex is a great needle choice. Because even if you pre-wash your batik fabrics, oftentimes they'll still have dye residue and can still be tightly woven. So the Microtex can just penetrate through that uh, batik fabric beautifully. So five popular needle types for piecing and for quilting. And all of these needles you can find at your local um, sewing machine dealer, the big box stores, etc. We've got the universal needle, the workhorse of all needle types. We've got the jeans needle when you're working with denim quilts, flannel quilts, heavy duty raggy quilts. We've got the top stitch needle with that elongated eye. So there's less stress on your thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle. We've got the quilting needle, specifically designed for piecing and for quilting. And last but not least is the Microtex needle with a very slim, acute point. When you're looking for precision stitching, the Microtex is your needle of choice. And here at the Great Wisconsin Quilt Show, you can find um, these already bundled up for you in the Nancy Zeman Sewing Studio which includes a little um, luggage tag with the Smets color chart and the ever popular Smets ABC pocket guide. So lots of, um, lots of needles for your piecing and for quilting. Now, I know that some of you like to, to sew garments also. So let's talk about sewing specifically with knits. And there are two needle types that you must have in your stash when you're sewing with knits. And the first is the jersey needle. The generic name for a jersey needle is a ballpoint needle. The jersey needle has a medium ballpoint. The other needle that you need in your stash when sewing with uh, knits is a stretch needle. And guess what? The stretch needle also has a medium ball point. But when you compare jersey and stretch needles, the stretch needle has a smaller eye and a deeper scarf. So now your machine, your fabric, your thread, your technique are all going to play just a little bit differently. So if you're sewing with knits, well, how do you know? Do you use a jersey or a stretch needle? Well, there's a rule of thumb that works 80% of the time. If your fabric has lycra, spandex, or elastic, you're going to use the stretch needle. If it's just a regular knit fabric, use the jersey. Sometimes stretch and jersey are interchangeable, but not always. But again, that rule of thumb is if your fabric has lycra, spandex or elastic, use the stretch needle. If it's just a regular knit, um, use the jersey. So uh, jersey and stretch you can find at your local sewing machine dealers, at the big box stores, at, even at some of your quilt and fabric stores. And yes, downstairs at the no Nancy Zeman um, Sewing stu Studio, we have these all bundled up for you. Um, the jersey and the stretch needles with the ever popular ABC pocket guide and the little luggage tag color chart. All right, let's scoot along here and let's talk about the newest needle. This one was introduced right before the pandemic. And if you don't know about it, 
Well, that's why I'm here today, to help keep you informed. We have the super nonstick needle. This is what the packaging looks like, the super nonstick. And when you look at that needle in the pack, you're going to notice that it looks a little bit differently. It's kind of got a charcoal gray color or um, a gunmetal color, and that's the anti-adhesive coating. But this needle also has a couple other special features. It has a reinforced blade, so there's less needle deflection when your stitch is created, and an extra large eye. So there's less stress on your thread when you're um, uh, sewing. So great features to the super nonstick. When are you going to use them? Well, how many of you like to make, um, like to do machine embroidery or machine applique? Absolutely, and what happens when, with those stabilizers? Oftentimes, they get sticky as you're stitching. The adhesive warms up and has a tendency to gum up your needle. So for machine embroidery, machine applique, the super nonstick is a great needle of choice. If you like to sew with oil cloth or splash fabric, this is a great needle choice. Or how many like to sew with vinyl? What happens when you're sewing on vinyl? The vinyl gets warm, and then it, the vinyl has a tendency to hug your needle. Then you can't see where you're sewing. <laughs> so the super nonstick will resist the vinyl from hugging your needle. And there's one other application for the super nonstick, and that's when you're working with um, Velcro or hoop and loop tape which is kind of an odd fabrication, right? It's sticky on one side, it's kind of crispy on the other, and fuzzy on the inside. And that super nonstick will just stitch through that Velcro beautifully. And one other application, if you do multimedia quilts, the super nonstick would be a great needle choice because oftentimes you're working with a spray adhesive or a fusible, Maybe you're working with foils or tins or paper, and um, uh, so the super nonstick can work beautifully um, through all those different fabrications. So, super nonstick available in four sizes 70, 80, 90, and 100. So, again, these you will find at your local sewing machine dealer. And these are downstairs also at the Nancy Zeman uh, Sewing Studio as a bundle, one pack of each size. Again, with the ever-popular ABC Pocket Guide and the Smets Luggage Tag Color Chart. So um, we have just covered a lot of needles. <laughs> You know, I travel quite a bit. I do a lot of virtual presentations also, and there's always one question that pops up. And I'm pretty sure it's a question that you've asked yourself too. And that is, how long does a needle last? <laughs> oh, see, you've asked yourself too. <laughs> well, here's the easy answer. They don't last forever. When you're sewing, your needles should never, ever look like these. These are really nasty-looking needles. That needle on the left-hand side looks like it has twin mountain peaks. The needle on the far right looks like a cutting blade. So what are these nasty little needles going to do to your fabrics? Yeah, they're going to shred and knead up your fabrics. So what are you going to do? Change the needle. So needles don't last forever. It's a simple repair that you can do yourself, you know, even at 1 or 2 o'clock in, in the morning. This slide here is one of my favorites because this is the same needle in every frame. This needle has been used and abused. But with our naked eye to the far left, that needle looks sharp, right? But with increased magnification, as you move to the right, you can see, oh, Oh my, look at all those burrs and striations. Look at that super lip at the very top and look how dull it is. So yeah, needles do not last forever. <laughs> they get dull with use. So how long does a needle last? I don't know. Could be three seconds if you hit a pen right away. 
Maybe if you're not a very aggressive sower, maybe it's uh, 20 hours of sowing time. I don't know. Three seconds, 20 hours, that's quite the range of time, right? So I know people like to actually um, average that out to 68 hours of um, sowing time. But how many of you have tried to time yourself? It's impossible to time yourself sewing with all the interruptions that we, we um, get. So how long does a needle last? I think what you should do is reframe that question to what are the clues to changing the needle while you're sewing? So what are the clues to changing the needle while you're sewing? Well, we kind of talked about one clue already. And that's when your thread is breaking or shredding. What are you going to do? Change out your needle. What you may not know is if you're not changing your needle frequently enough, the thread will actually create a groove in the eye of the needle. And that's not a good thing. A groove in the eye of the needle, what's it going to do? Break and shred your thread. So what are you going to do? Change out your needle. What's another clue to changing out your needle? Well, what's happening to your fabric when the stitch is actually made? Is the fabric puckering? Is your fabric snagging? Or in a really bad case, the needle hits the fabric and is tucking the fabric into the throat plate. So hello, those are clues that you need to change out the needle. <laughs> okay, and what is another clue to changing out um, the needle? Well, um, what about your sound? Hopefully when you're sewing, you're in that bubble, right? And your machine is humming along. Hum everything is right in our sewing world. And then you start to hear that little click, click, clicking sound. What is it? Hey, it's your needle saying, hey, I've been working hard here. Change me. If you ignore the clicking, what happens next? It graduates to a pop, pop, popping sound. Now your needle is yelling at you, change me, change me. If you ignore the clicking and the popping, what's happening now? Clunk, clunk, clunk. Your machine is begging you, change me, change me. <laughs> so today, I'm not here just to sell you more needles, but I really want you to have a successful sewing experience. And if you stop and think about it, you spend a lot of money on your machine or your machines, right? That's a pretty big investment. You spend a lot of money curating your fabric stash, even those hidden stashes. You spend a lot of money collecting those beautiful threads. And what about all that money you've spent on books and patterns and lectures and retreats, etc.? And let's not forget your investment in time. Your, your sewing time is important too. So let's complete that entire, that entire investment cycle right down to the hardest working two inch piece of steel in your machine, the Smets needle, which by the way, is also the least expensive part to your machine. So if you're sewing at one or two o'clock in the morning, you need to have that little stash of needles um, to change out. So uh, yep. Yeah. The needle works hard. <laughs> so how do you keep track of your um, needles? I know as a quilter or a sewist that oftentimes we juggle projects, right? So maybe you're working on a quilt. Maybe you're using the quilting needle. Now you're going to make a little t-shirt for a kiddo. So maybe you're going to use the stretch needle. So when you come back to that quilt, how do you know that that original needle is still sewing worthy? What you can do is take that, that used needle, that slightly used needle, run it over your fingernail, and if it leaves a scratch on your nail, you know you've got a burr, so what are you going to do? You're going to toss that needle. Or if you've got a pair of old hose or maybe a sample jersey fabric, run the needle across your, your arm, um, across the fabric, and if it leaves a snag, guess what? 
you know you need to um, toss out that, that needle. So if your needle is still sewing worthy, there is a product called the Grab It My Pad. This is a wonderful little organizer to keep all your slightly used needles um, nice and orderly. This is an extra thick piece of felt. And I updated this last year, so all of the different Smets needle types are on here with using the Smets color chart. So blue for jeans, green for quilting, orange for jersey, et cetera. Then within each needle type, there's a cell for all the different uh, needle sizes. So your slightly used needles, you're just going to slide it right into to the appropriate needle type and size cell. The needle pad also comes with a little flower head pen. So if you have some older Smets needles that don't have the color coding, once you take that needle out of the package and put it in your machine, slide the little uh, uh, flower head pen into the appropriate needle type and size cell. So now you don't have to rely on your memory. These you can find at your local sewing machine dealer and also downstairs at the Nancy Zeman uh, sewing studio. Okay, we have covered a lot of information here today, haven't we? <laughs> How are you going to keep track of it? Well, I do have a handout. When you go to buy your Smets needles at your local sewing machine dealer, you can ask for the Smets ABC pocket guide, and they may have that for you. If you can't make it to your local store, well, guess what? You can go to smetsneedles.com, and there's a plethora of free information there. This is what the home page looks like. You've got five different needle types um, across the top of the page, and when you scroll down, you're going to see for all your needle needs. Click here for the free web-based app. So you're going to click that, and you're going to find a lot of information. You're going to find the ever-popular Smets ABC Pocket Guide. You're going to find the Smets Collar Chart for reference. And underneath that image where it says Smets ABC Pocket Guide, the very uh, last listing is Smets Free Web App. Click that and you can download the resources, these free resources, onto your phone. You'll download the Smets ABC Pocket Guide, which has the pictures of everything I've covered here today for you. All the different needle types are described with sizes, color charts, um, etc. There is a listing of a hundred different fabrics, alphabetical listing of fabrics. So now you don't have to remember what needle type and size to use for bamboo or cork or whatever fabric you're working on. It's right there in, in your phone. The Smets color chart will be in that free app also. Plus, I'm excited because now we're linked up with a few of the major consumer thread companies with their suggestions for needle type um, and size for their specific thread. So lots of free information at smetsneedles.com that you can just download right into your, <laughs> your phone. <laughs> or today, um, you can also just scan the image. So we have just covered a lot of information. My name is Rhonda Pierce. I represent Smets Home Sewing Machine Needles in North America. Um, our website is smetsneedles, all one word, dot com. I also have a personal blog, sewswmorestitches.com. I'm not selling anything, but I do document the trips that I take, and I'm starting to travel quite a bit more. I've got 20, 25 trips uh, this year. So um, I like to share what people make and the people that I, I meet. So you can find that at Sew More Stitches. So if you see me downstairs, please come by and say hello. I'll answer any questions you might have, and I'm going to ask you, what's your favorite Smets needle type and size? So um, that is my presentation. So I want to th say thank you to each of you for being here today. I realize that needles aren't glamorous. They're not sexy, they're not romantic, but guess what? You just can't use your machine without a Smets needle. Okay, so I saw a couple questions. Um, yes, what was your question? You're asking about this needle size? Yes. 
Yes, and there are two numbers. So the first number um, is, the larger number, is the metric number, the Smets number. But Smets is not the only needle manufacturer in the world, right? There are other needle companies. <laughs> and they use what's referred to as the um, Asian International or Singer Sizing System. When you look at your size right here, 8012. The 80 is the metric number, the, the number that Smets uses. They measure the blade here. They get 0.80. They take that times 100 to come up with size 80. And the other needle systems, Singer, International, or um, Asian, their sizing systems um, would be 12. So many years ago, the um, needle companies got together and said, hey, let's be consistent with our sizing. So a size 80 is always a size 12, or a 90 is always um, a, a size 14. So very good question. One of the things I noticed during the pandemic was when the micro threads came, became very popular do, during the pandemic, the, um, the smallest size needles became popular too. Lots of those, um, I think um, R&K had um, a micro thread that they like to use, either 65 or 60. So this is a very small needle. You'll use it with your finest threads and also with your more delicate threads. Um, 80 is just a good, good workhorse. Size 80 followed by size um, 9014 are your uh, most popular needle sizes. Again, when I, what's my benchmark for needle size? When I use an everyday thread, which is a 40 weight thread, I generally use a size 8012 needle. But now if I'm going to be working with a heavier weight thread, I know I need to go up at least a needle size. So if I'm working with a heavier thread, now I know I need something larger than an 8012, and I might go up to a 90 or even a 100, depending on the weight of the thread. Again, my benchmark for a 40 weight thread um, is an 8012 needle. Now if I'm going to be working with a finer thread, I will um, size down to maybe a size 70. So there is no precise um, formula. It, it used to be that there were only just a few fabric companies, right? But now <laughs> there's a plethora of uh, fabric companies with different finishes, different dyes, different techniques, et cetera. And you know, sometimes our machines have personalities too. So what works for you may not work for your, your um, sewing buddy. So with Smets, you have options and sometimes it requires testing. Oh, it's steel, German steel. Smets needles are made from German steel. Actually, when I went to Germany in 2012, I actually saw some of the production of the needles. At that time, they were still making some of the specialty needles. It takes, uh, anybody want to guess how long it takes to make a needle? <laughs> Yeah, 12 weeks to make a needle. And they're batching them hundreds at a time, but nevertheless, it's really an intense um, um, uh, process. So they start with German steel in coils about like this, and then they straighten it. And then there's uh, 30, over 30 steps to the production of, of a needle. So in... Uh, the early 1800s, Smets was actually the first um, needle manufacturer to create a master die in order to create the eye of the needle. So they put a master die on this soft steel, and the steel oozes out, and then it's eventually um, ground down. They uh, make the groove. Then there are high heat ovens and... Um, uh, special refrigerated uh, processes that they go through to, to tempering. So, yeah, it's quite the, the process to make a needle. So when you're spending a couple dollars on a needle, wow, what a deal for all the work that goes into a needle. It was 2012 when I went there, and I went with um, two colleagues, and I gave a presentation on all the education and marketing materials that I had given. And one of the things that I had learned from my sewing public from the different shows that I was attending was, oh my, once you took the needle out of the package, 
You couldn't determine the size because nobody can read this, right? You know, the size is pr imprinted here. So I went to Germany with the mission of color coding the needles. They already had five needles that um, had a single band for needle type, but people were saying, oh, you know, why don't you color type and size? So um, that was my mission when I went to Germany. And um, at the end of our meeting, they didn't say anything about color coding. And I'm thinking there, I'm sitting with these, all these guys and I'm thinking, you know, I didn't fly all this way to not get an answer about color coding. So I said, what about color coding? And the president said, we will not do that. Okay, now I know where I'm starting from, right? So now I'm going to 2025 shows um, throughout the year. And that's when email was becoming really popular. Everybody had emails at home. So I said, um, if you would like the color coding or if you have ideas to improve Smet's Needle, send me an email. So every two to three weeks, I would batch dozens of emails to Smets Germany say, requesting color coding by needle type and size. Well, guess what? In June of 2013, I got the email that I had hoped for <laughs> that said, Dear Mrs. Pierce, please stop the emails. <laughs> You're getting your color coded needles. So it's thank you to you. It's thank you to everyone that's been to my classes. Um, sometimes change takes, takes a while, but we do listen and um, things work out. So thank you, everybody. Proceeds from the Great Wisconsin Quilt Show support PBS Wisconsin programming. Your financial gift helps make this event possible. Thank you.